thanks so much for joining. This is all about the hybrid meeting room. This is the first time I've gone live in a little while, so I'm quite excited to be back live. Let's get into it. This is going to be an unboxing of actually three different pieces of tech for the hybrid meeting room. A hybrid meeting room is when you've got some people who are actually in person in the meeting and some people are watching from remotely essentially um, on their own computers. Thanks so much for joining. You can pop questions in the chat. Supers are available as well if that's something that you're into. Um, this video is not sponsored by IPVO, but it is important that you understand that I have been sponsored by IPVO before and they did send me these things <laughs> to get unboxed and to review for you. We've got three different things in there and uh, here they all are <laughs> listed out. And every camera that you, every shot that you see in today's video is going to in fact be from an IPVO camera. Every microphone that you will see will be from an IPVO camera. That You're looking at the IPVO uh, Totem 180, which I'll just show to you here. It's the Totem 180. Uh, it's got two overlapping video stitched cameras. And um, yeah, the idea is that you hold, have the whole of a meeting room covered, uh, the whole 180 degrees of a meter room covered and, and it will intelligently actually track people within that meter room. That's the one that you're listening to at the minute with its AI mics. Let me know that you're hearing me loud and clear and that everything's um, going well on your end. As I say, this is a bit of a sort of different setup from what I normally use, which is normally use my Canon cameras and they're linked in through the USB, but we're going directly with this super easy to use plug and play IPVO camera. So we're going to get these unboxed in just a minute. Um, the running order is going to be the IPVO 120 first, and then the IPVO Vocal, and then the IPVO Totem 360. And let's say everything is coming to you from an IPVO camera. I'm uh, just uh, going to just say welcome. Very Thanks much. very much for joining the live stream. Don't forget to pop your questions in the chat and I'll get onto them at points during the live stream and at the end in a Q&A session. Supers are available though if you do want to highlight your question and I will try and get to it a bit earlier. Thanks so much if you're watching this on the replay. Feel free to fire in your questions into the main comments section as well and I'll get around to answering them. If you're watching it after a day or so you should find it chaptered out so feel free to skip around. I'm Kit Betts Masters and this is the Evaluate Everything show. Let's pop over to Live Kit. So awesome. And I just want to make you aware that after this live stream, I'm going to do a separate shorter live stream, which is going to be a members live stream. So there is now the option on my channel to join the channel. And if you want to join in the members live stream, then you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to first of all, I'm going to tell you a story and we talk about something which I've been thinking about a lot recently is my friend, Peter, I'm going to call him at least during this story. And this story I'm going to call Talent Needs Nurtured. And uh, I just think that it really chills me out to start these things with a start these live streams with a bit of a story. And well, there's a reason to get started and watch all the live streams, isn't it? At least if you just stay for the first 10 minutes, you know, you're going to get a nice story. So I've been thinking about Peter a lot recently. He's a teacher as well. And I've always looked at him with a lot of admiration because he's climbed the ladder so quickly in his career. And that's something, you know, always seems to be attractive, doesn't it? And I've always thought he's an amazing guy. He's so talented. He's got such a positive energy. He brings such a positive energy to whatever he does in the schools. But he's a bit of a victim, I think, of the idea that's been popularised in education that the most talented people should be fast tracked to the highest positions of leadership. And I sort of dispute that a little bit, really, because I think that fast track does lead to burnout. And burnout, let's not forget, is a real medical illness. And Peter's story reminds me of the story of the reeds and the oak tree. So let me know in the comments if you know the story of the reeds and the oak tree. Um, and the moral of that story is it's better to bend rather than to be stubborn and to break. The oak tree appears really strong and the oak tree is really proud of its strength. But it, whilst the reeds appear just to sway with them and they, they appear to be so affected by the wind, after the storm, they just stand right back up whereas the oak tree gets uprooted. So that is the sort of story of Peter in a way, really, isn't it? Is, um, he, he's unfortunately gone the way of the oak tree. And I don't think he's an incredibly proud person, but I think he was stubborn in that he, he sort of believed in himself. He, he wants to keep doing this. And I don't think he's completely broken, but we'll get, to, we'll get through uh, to the where, where we're at at the minute with this story. 
it's funny i get an awful lot from reading with my son and my daughter now because having a family is a bit like having a second go at learning all the morals and all the wisdom and you re you revisit these ideas in order just to teach them to your young ones let me know if this is ringing bells any of this story or that bit about teaching your young ones and actually talking to peter he told me he told me he'd sacrificed relationships because he was working all the time he'd sacrificed his health he didn't go to the gym as often because he was working all the time and what he'd always done is always said yes to everything he added a responsibility here responsibility there and in in his work it almost became a bit of a joke you know well peter's dealing with that just just email peter with that um, and his inbox must have become absolutely unmanageable. Again, let me know in the comments if this is something that sort of rings bells to you. There are, there are two lines, there are two career paths that you can take in your career. One says absolutely yes to everything and moves forward at every opportunity. And the other waits for the right opportunities and they, they move up when they are ready, those people. So I really, you know, I think it's really important to stress that you should manage your own career in a sober fashion. You know, I don't mean not drinking, but I mean, like, take it, take it steady and consider things in a sober, in a cold light of day. Really consider things in that sober fashion. Manage your own CPD in a sober fashion. And if you're in leadership, then manage the learning and the experiences of those in your team in that same sober fashion. Um, maybe you've heard if you're in leadership, you have the conscious competence curve. And let me know if you've heard of this, this the conscious competence curve. And I'm going to sort of draw this one out for you <laughs> um, because I could not get any tablet in here. Um, conscious competence is like, it's a, I think it was, I've been just looked at a little bit um, of this actually first in. Phillips, Anthony, Berliner, um, and Cribbin. Um, no, sorry, Phillips, Frank, uh, Berliner, and Cribbin. And in 1960, they sort of first sort of made this uh, model popular. And the idea of conscious competence is it, sort of that whenever you start a new role, whenever you start uh, trying to do something new, you start in this period of unconscious competence. Oh, sorry, unconscious incompetence. And then you have to sort of move to really realising that you, you are incompetent. <laughs> it's a funny point to sort of say that you should get to. And that's called conscious... Um, incompetence. And then from there, you move to the point where you're conscious, you learn some new skills and you move to the point where you now have conscious competence. And finally, you get to a point where you have unconscious competence. And everyone sort of needs to go through these these things when they learn and when they pick up new skills and it's not always very comfortable uh, you, you always come in here uh, unconscious competence that you don't even know when you get a new role you don't even know the kind of challenges that you're going to face you get this, you've got this giddy excitement and then all the challenges come as a surprise because you weren't even aware these challenges existed and it makes you feel pretty bad so your, your mood <laughs> goes down quite a lot uh, and then you get to the point where oh, you're actually aware of these difficulties that you're going to have you're actually aware that there, there is a skills gap you become aware of the skills gaps that you have and choose a pick a pen you become really aware that oh you, you can't do this as well as you thought you could do it isn't going to be as easy as you as you thought you would and you and you need you realize oh i need to learn this i need to learn that often you get a mentor that if you're lucky at least that can actually show you where you're going wrong and then you move into a phase where you are, then you then learn the skills, but you have to sort of coach yourself through them the whole time. You, it's, you're not just doing it unconsciously, you, you have to really think about what you're doing. And then you move into this, finally, you move into this phase, the unconscious competence phase, where actually you could do it without even thinking, the skills become really natural. And you wonder really, in this, when you're in this point, you wonder why other people don't get the same results that you get. And this is when you need to move on. This is when you need to move on to another part of your career and you come back in that 
same point here we'll do the next promotion and you go through that same journey and actually having the emotional intelligence to to really know and understand that's the journey you're on is key to avoiding this burnout uh, so it's this u-shape uh, curve and you really feel bad when you're in this point down here some people call it the change curve some people talk about it like that and i think you need to help your team if you're a leader and you need to help yourself see that this is a process that we all go through as we learn new skills um, and as we advance in our, in our careers um, so to go back to those other two, those two career paths, one moves on at this point, one moves on here at the conscious competence phase, where ah, I can do this, I'm good at my job, I know what I'm doing, you move on here. You're not ready to go through another one of these cycles. Another one waits to this point here, and this is when you should move on, when you're at the unconscious competence phase, when really, when you can actually teach somebody else those same new skills, when you could become that mentor if you take someone else through those through that cycle that's when you should be moving on and i've been thinking about this discussion about burnout for some time which haven't really had the kind of context to talk about it in really but um i've been waiting to make a video about it for some time because it is an, an a um, accepted medical condition burnout now and um, there are three signs to look for this is my bit of research this is from the ncbi website three signs to look for in yourself or in other members of your team exhaustion is the first one so look out for exhaustion in the people that you're working with right these on as well and exhaustion is when emotional levels are extremely low maybe there's a downward spiral maybe you notice that somebody's getting more and more tired less and less emotionally available and uh, you, you know maybe, maybe people are thinking i'm not sure how long i can take this i'm not sure how long I can keep this going and that's the way i think peter must have felt about his inbox really um deep depersonalization that's an interesting one okay depersonalization is when people start to get cynical or sarcastic and then they feel they need to really vent about their job you'll notice them you know having quite angry outbursts in staff room things like that if you notice people like that um then they could well be getting towards burnout there's something called compassion fatigue really that's what that looks like and at this stage they're not going to be emotionally available for anyone uh, their emotional energy is going to be absolutely dry and then finally uh they get a lack of efficacy So they start to believe that actually they can't do the job. They can't do a very good job. And I've always talked about uh, a, when you're having fun, when you're enjoying work, it will almost certainly be because you feel that you can do a good job. You feel the situation is right for you to have a good job. And although it is, it is important that your bosses and everything um, do create those atmospheres, it's important that you recognize when they are and are not right. And one thing about the evaluate everything mindset, which I'm talking about more and more, is that actually you need to be able to recognize when you are not uh, influencing the situation as well as you can, and that that problem lies with you perhaps rather than with the situation itself. And you need to decide if that means moving yourself out and looking for a situation that you can actually influence. And that's the way to think about these things. Um, but when I'm feeling good about work, when I'm not feeling any of these things, then there's nothing I'd like to do more than work. You know, work is amazing when you're in that kind of flow state. And that's when the challenges match the skills. You get that state of flow and you get that feeling where hours pass in minutes and you feel like uh, you're connected to something much bigger than yourself. But we, even when you're in that flow state, you need to factor in the rest. So yes, you should strike while the iron is hot, and like Peter, you should be enthusiastic and sparky, but uh, you know, and say yes to things when you have the capacity, but just don't cast unreasonable expectations on yourself because no one can actually keep up that flow state indefinitely. Um, I wanna talk more about a flow state in a later video, but uh, don't be afraid to say no in order to maintain that state of professional flow. My friend Peter is gonna be absolutely fine, he'll be all right, he just needs to reflect on that experience, evaluate what happened and come back even stronger no doubt they'll do that uh, and it's all stemmed the whole thing from him is stemmed from just wanting to do a good job and wanting to be a responsible person and wanting to do the best that he can for his teams 
it's not it's not ambition that's caused this he needs a really good professional and it's just a reminder though that story is that burnout can happen to all professionals so let's get on let's <laughs> talk about something completely different now um, that's the end of the story and let's get this unboxed this is the package from ipivo uh, right after this thanks so much for watching just watching the majority of videos or watching all the way through videos is an amazing way that you can help out with the channel so thanks so much for sticking around through this live stream i hope you find it useful and helpful let me know though if there's anything that you want to see more of or less of don't forget that by hitting that like button is absolutely free and it does send a message to the algorithm that this is content that people find valuable and therefore it will help it to spread to more people so please before we jump back into the live stream just roll down a bit and press that thumbs up let's go back to hit live so let's do it let's uh, get this huge box open and let's have a look what we've got to unbox inside i'm interested um to know what things look like to you because you're watching a live stream which is entirely powered by IPVO cameras and the microphones that are built into them. And uh, here's three new products in their video conferencing line. IPVO, this is not sponsored, but um, I have done some work to sponsor some live streams and other videos before as well. Uh, box. But I'm interested to know what are your, is your take on this um, camera and sound here. Let's pop this to one side. Oh, that'd be cool. And uh, <laughs> let's get our top down view as well so we can actually get these things out. So the three things in this package, we've got the IPVO Totem 360. This will be the last thing that I look at today. I've got the IPVO Vocal. This Perhaps is one of the most interesting ones, actually, most immediately useful, like they all are. And then the IPVO Totem 120. And you've been watching so far, you're looking at me and listening to me through the IPVO uh, Totem 180. And and also this top-down shot is from the IPVO VZX, which is the oldest kind of classroom visualizer. And these are the most popular visualizers or IPVO visualizers are the most popular visualizers here in the UK because they're great value and they're so easy to use. It's not hard to recommend them for school use. And um, they're, now they're bringing in meeting room solutions as well. So everything is coming to you from that, the top down shot included, absolutely everything. Uh, this is the 180. The, the, uh, it's not on 180 view just now. If I just click it, once it transfers into its tracking mode, so this is its built-in AI tracking. You see, it's kind of sometimes cutting me off a little bit like that, but it does kind of latch on to people who are speaking. And if I hold it down, then I will go into the 360, sorry, the, the 180 mode there. But I've got to first of all stop the AI tracking. There's the uh, 180 degree, and it's actually two lenses, two 120 lenses that are overlapping in the middle, and you can kind of don't really see that stitched point until you move something directly past it. So actually, it does a good job. If I move it, you'll see, you'll notice perhaps that there's a slight color change in the middle, but it actually quite quickly works out where that gap is. They are, and it's stitched the two things together there to give us the uninterrupted view. And I just want to go back to the 120 view, which is a far more natural view. So I have to hold it down to go back to the 120 and then click once to turn off the AI tracking. You can use it with this software as well. And I have a full review on that, so I'm not going to spend much more time on that. But this is the 120. So this is a 120 view rather than a 180 view. So uh, let's get this one uh, fished out. Now I'm going to need your evaluations. So please comment because I can't hear what it sounds like. and I, I, and see what it looks like, I guess, but um, only on my small sort of preview here. So let me know what you think of all these products as we go. So here we go, the Totem 120. You can see the idea is it plugs directly into any of your video conferencing apps. Or you can use it with their high stage technology. Uh, this one, I think this is a very interesting one, the 120, because it has both a sort of meeting room camera and the visualizer style camera as well built in. So it's designed to do both. Uh, this one might be a great solution 
for many conference rooms. So let's have a little look. It's lovely. It's really slender. It's really different design than what I'm used to from my people. I'll just leave that on here as well. Um, and show you around a little bit more. I'm, I'm pretty confident these will just plug and play. This one, however, um, doesn't have a U option to go into USB-A unless I find a converter pretty darn quickly. Um, <laughs> because this one has a built-in cable, so there's no way to actually replace that. No, there isn't. Um, so this one has to go into USB-C, which my computer doesn't have a USB-C. So I'll see if I can find a dongle really quickly. I'm not sure that I will, I will be able to find one. Um, but this has two cameras on it. One is a 120 degree camera and the other one is the, uh, is the 80 degree camera. The 80 degree camera is for when it is in its visualizer mode. So you, or document camera mode as many people call it. How do I do that? So a little look, can you see this all right? Yes, you can. Just down here, Put the little owl lies down so you can see it a bit better. There we are. And I lift it up like this, so it slides up like so. And then it gets to a point, does it? And tilts forward. Can't be at the point yet, can I? Yeah, keep going. There you are, tilts forward. And then it comes a top down view. Isn't that quite cool? So really neat there, and I think it might be a good option because you still have that AI tracking that you've built in, um, and you can still use iStage to actually ha have it um, sort of select and move with whoever's speaking to sort of frame them. Uh, let's have a little look if I can find something to actually go ahead and plug this into the computer whilst I just... So I just dropped the live stream for a few seconds to tell you something which might surprise you. Did you know that most of the people who watch my channel aren't actually subscribed? Even people that are regular viewers. What's that about? <laughs> no worries, but really channels like mine, it really does help with the way that robots decide who to send my videos out to. So take a moment to scroll down and check whether your button says subscribed or subscribe. If it says subscribe, then just click it and let's get back into the live stream. So yeah, let's get back into the live stream and see if I can figure this one out. Uh, so I'd need to go into, no, I don't think there's a way to, to get this onto my, no, there's not, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we're not going to be able to see the, um, the 120 in action in this live stream, but we will be able to, uh, in a full review video. So this will be good. The thing I would say is it's quite sort of doing that extension part there at first at least does doesn't feel the sturdiest of situations, but I think it might just get easier to do as you go through. You can see it's just held in this sort of grid and then it gets to a point where there is then a flex, and it can flex over like that, and it snaps past a little point there. So these are little things that are potential weaknesses in the design. But there we are, we're gonna have to use it for a long time before we even find out whether that's the case or not. Uh, I do trust the IP row design. It's clearly got a couple of switches on it for you to switch between the different modes, either the top-down mode or the um, 180 degree mode or the eye stage and it also has an AI noise cancelling microphone built in as well so that's a pretty cool piece of tech and I'll have to sort that out and use that with my laptop which has a USB-C in or find a different type of adapter of course it's also a possibility uh, right so let's have a little look at it. let's have a little look on the uh, web page for that really quickly whilst the next one ready so this is the uh, 120 as you can see it's a narrower view than it's going to be from the 180 it's got two lenses built in one's the 120 degree for the hybrid video conferencing and the other is the 80 degree 
for the document sharing. And it's very light and portable, is what we're talking about. Plug and play as long as your computer has the USB C. And uh, so you do need to be aware of that. You can see there's sort of different modes there showing this as useful for. So there we are. So I, I think it's probably the same eight megapixel sensors that we're used to in IPvo cameras. So it's sort of similar video quality, I'm sure you'll get to the ones that I've shown off before. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and unbox the next one now. So let's go back to our view here. Now Pivo Vocal. Please don't have a built in uh, <laughs> USB-C cable, because then it will just be an unbox, but it won't be any first thoughts. And I'd love to hear what you, got, you guys are thinking about the quality of this uh, live stream in terms of camera and the microphone quality, because I'm not using the same ones that I've used before. Here's the microphone itself, vocal, and it does have the option to connect by USB-C, and then I can go into an A port, I'm sure, there as well. So that's a better solution, but I can see why that's got fixed. The previous one's got a fixed lens there. Uh, and this is a AI beamforming Bluetooth speakerphone. So this also allows you to have it be not just a microphone, but also allows it to be the speaker for your meetings as well. So that's very, very useful. Sort of all in one solution there. Obviously, apart from the cameras, I don't know whether they're planning on, you know, the next thing they'll do is bring out a 120 or a 180 with a speakerphone as well. So the, the dual microphones in this 180 are pretty good as, as far as I've tested them beforehand. And this one, I guess, will have the cable. And they're these very nice uh, green dual USB-C cables as well that you get, you get with them. Okay, so... Let's get this one built on. Let's have a little look around it first. An AI speaker and an AI mic. The volume control is actually hmm. does seem like you should be able to just oh yeah, it's on maximum there. So you can twist it around like this. That's it as maximum. It's just a sort of ring on the outside. Nice design there. Gonna put it halfway and I will need you guys to help me out that. We've got omnidirectional or directional. So the idea being that you can leave it in the middle of a room on omnidirectional and it'll pick up everybody. Or you can sort of point it and pass it around. And it does have a it does have a Bluetooth, so it's got a battery in it and it's got a Bluetooth uh, speakerphone functionality. So you could actually connect it by Bluetooth and pass it to people. That's great. I I'm guessing there will be a way to mute as well directly on it. Probably this one. Cool. Okay, well, let's give it a go then. So, so this one, yeah, the mute button's right in the front there. There's the mute button there, the big red one. Let's hope this one just works as uh, simple as that. So we've got that USB-C cable available. This, I suppose, is saying that it's not charged yet, which is fine. Turn the microphone on. Now I'm going to need to select it in my uh, settings in my studio here. And we've been from the microphone from the actual VZX most of the time. So let's go. I'm not seeing it recognised just yet. This is now this is now the microphone from the 180. That should be even better. Ah, the wrong button. Good luck. What do you think? Let's yeah, come on as a speaker. We do buttons flashing, probably meaning it's on pairing mode directly. Press the AI mic, there you go, that's on. Now I should be able to find it. That's cameras, audio, echo cancelling speakerphone. I it is. How does that sound? How does that sound? Does that sound 
better or worse than before? I'm going to presume it is better than before. It does also have a sort of levels, a indication of the levels. So if I'm speaking too loudly, then I'll know to move it further away from my voice as well. Let's, let's put it on directional. Speaking in thing. This volume of the microphone or just the volume of the microphone or just the speaker. You need to tell me how good these are. It's a really nice piece of tech, isn't it? A really nicely designed thing. You can imagine. Leave it sort of in front of where I'm normally pointing myself and speaking towards. Don't do that. That's good. It does have omnidirectional, that's its omnidirectional mode. So, well, let's test it out from moving in further from the room then. So, so let that lay out. How did it sound if I go and stand at the door? It's only about three meters away. How does that sound when I'm further away from there? That's it, it's on this omnidirectional, got the volume about halfway up there. Is that crisp and clear? Uh, it's not quite pointed at me, but it should be okay on the directional. If I just move around the room a little bit and talk to you, let me know in the comments what you think about that quality. Is it good enough? Is it better than good enough? Let me know. Really interested to, to hear. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on directional because I think that should be the best mode. And go back on and open up the but not least, certainly not least, <laughs> both cameras actually, uh, the IPVO Totem at 360. So this has been the bow vocal now. Let's look at it on its um, web page as well. Because why not? It's the IPVO vocal. And all the different from that 40 hour battery life. That's pretty impressive if it delivers that. I'm, why it wouldn't deliver that if that's what they're saying. Maybe initially out of the box, but uh, let's test that out for a full review. Two way noise reduction, five meter audio pickup. Okay. Has both a directional and an omni directional mode versus type 360. And, it's and as you've just seen, it is entirely plug and play. So I'm back to any software. Just plug straight in via USB C to USB A cable, and it works. And um, yeah, don't tell me what you think. Good, bad, indifferent, you tell. Me. Okay, so let's do the final uh, thing now. Right after this. Thanks so much for joining the live stream or for watching the replay. Just being here and watching the majority of the videos is a really, really useful way to help my channel grow. But if you want to say thanks in a really simple but also meaningful way, it's just to share out my videos like this one. Just copy the link from the browser or press the share button on your phone and copy the link, then paste it into wherever you discuss eating tablets. A group on Facebook, a Reddit subreddit or a Discord server. Pop that link in there and say, Kit's demonstrating eating tablets live. Jump in. <laughs> Again, I love hanging out with you people and I appreciate you spending your time watching these live streams. I really enjoy making them with you. Right, let's get the last but not least, the 360 conference camera. This one is the most expensive of the three that we've looked at today. And this is the most expensive solution. I think this might be the most expensive device they make full stop, actually. But this is a 360, sit in the middle of the table, like this, got everybody around the table. Believe so, the eye framing, and you can use software on the TV to give you more control over that. Try and demonstrate both of those as long as it's built in the only cable. So here we are. Nice, nicely packaged. Nice piece of design. One thing I haven't mentioned is they all have the standard uh, tripod thread at the bottom here. So you can put it on my body if you need to. Really big. Uh, yeah, I see why. 
360 conference camera and speakerphone. Ah, so this does both the microphone and the cameras. There are four of them on there. Twice what the well. So I was wondering, is there one that's a sort of default front? I guess that. First, at least. Mute button and a volume button directly on, which the vocal doesn't have a vocal. Oh, the volume of the vocal is them, so it is there. Rotating it on, and then the AR button there as well. Get you an Kensington lock this one. And the reason why it's got the extra uh, like of box here is because we think of these live unboxings is it's a good plan. Same green cable there. That I've all the editing to do, and it gets you the kind of things out. And you see the kind of process of unboxing, and you see the real thing of that. Any, without any edits, where any speeding up, see that ah, having to realize that you don't have the right cables at times. So here is the button. Incredibly long, so uh, be aware of. You also see the massively um, the the real three hundred and sixty room that I shoot these things in my my studio, my study, come studio, my home office. How it's going to come across on the 1080 live feed there. We will give you all the different options. Yeah. Time. There we are. Because I'm going to plug it. And I'm going to need to steal the. Steal the USB C cable out of the microphone now. So I will I'll do that. I'll play. Let's just watch. Thanks so much for watching. Please do post your comments and your questions in the chat, and I will get to them during the QA session at the end of the video or at key points during the video. Don't forget that super chats are available if you want to really highlight those questions to me. Totally no expectation there. If you do want to support the channel monetarily, then that option is also available. I've also added channel memberships as an option because many of you have been generous enough to give super chats in the live streams and I wanted a way to actually offer something of value in exchange for that kindness. So rather than just buying me a non-alcoholic beverage with a super chat, now you can join me for one with only members straight after every live stream. Okay, so there we are. And it's gone onto its default microphone. That's it plugged in there in my room. And it's automatically gone to this view, which I wasn't expecting it to do, which has given you essentially the full 360 down here at the bottom. And it's given you a, I guess, a 120 here at the top. Uh, what do you think of that? That's uh, straight away. Now it showed that. If I turn it around, I wonder if it automatically realizes yeah so it switches between the sort of most viewed camera but you're still getting that uninterrupted 360 degree view on the whole thing there and 
it should be using its own microphone now. Let me know if you can't hear me. <laughs> uh, it's very obviously odd perspective for me to be looking behind me, but that's that's my entire study there. <laughs> Uh, now, you can also use this with the AI stage with the software called iStage. I'll have a go at that in a moment. Um, but you can see this is pretty interesting. So this is a pretty interesting thing for it to do. I wonder if there were more than one speaker, if it would automatically chop us into different groups. Let's have a look on the website just to sort of get our ideas about this. This is the um, immersive one 360 view how would you feel about that if you were at home <laughs> if you were remote looking into this and you got this 360 review uh, view of everyone panoramic 5k resolution i'll try changing the different modes in a moment voice detection how's the microphone sounding to you there at home as well ai tracking and framing again this is for cameras stitched together just like the 180 was four video modes okay so i'll try those out now easy portability and the sound diffusion uh 360 degree sound diffusion speaker spans all around the space and delivers sound in all directions evenly okay uh, obviously i'll really test that out as well as testing out the microphone how you get this feedback conferencing mode must be what i'm in at the minute i'm in conferencing mode now or surround mode uh, that's interesting that's that gives you a, a front and back that's quite that's quite nice actually yeah i like that hybrid learning mode displays the lecturer and the class at the same time with the lecturer tracked by the ai presentation modes so that's just basically one uh, track up to two pres presenters there we are um so there's the four modes that they're just straight off you know plug and play no software needed and i think you can probably can use the software um well, they aren't really advertising it in this. Obviously, it does work with everything instantly. It is very, very useful that it can just, you know, it's just recognized as a camera with a uh, 1080 feed just by plugging in. As you've seen, no setup, no installation. There was nothing on my computer that enabled that already. It was just straight away, it's worked. So let's have a little look. Yeah, this one, this is really making a lot of sense let's solo that layout now so this one this mode is the first mode this is the conferencing mode so what it is going to do it is currently uh just recognizing that it's just me um i can try and trick it <laughs> this worked last time because here I've got a picture of myself and my wife. Yeah, you see this? So it's now recognized that there's actually three people effectively in the room and it's framed them up. Uh, there we are. So it's quite nice, right? So that is the sort of view you're gonna get of meetings. I would probably put this on a something higher up so it doesn't uh, show what it's showing just there. Let's go ahead and sort that out. Though it doesn't have what the 180 did have, which is a little um, a little button to lift and you know to, to change the angles of the actual cameras. So this Totem 180 has a little thing where you can move the little owl eyes up and down, like so, which is very very useful. Now. What else have we here? So this this yellow button is the one which will allow me to different video modes. So this is the surround mode. So this is just always going to show top is one side, bottom is the other side. Where's the stitches? There, I think. Not sure exactly. It's a very unflattering view with the with the light right behind. Probably not getting the most out of it. Maybe I should try having it in this position instead. It's a lot 
the light the white balance is a lot um less friendly than the the 180 was it's looking really really red something i'm noticing straight away it's not very flattering been in the sun today but it's not that bad <laughs> Uh, so that's interesting. And then the other mode we have is hybrid learning mode. So it's going to try and track basically what's over the front. So just use that front camera. I think this is totally no, it's stitched. Is it AI? It's tracking me as well. Yes, yeah, so it's going to try and track the presenter, um, the lecturer essentially. And then it's also showing you the class, which is quite an interesting thing to show i'm going to definitely try this out um, <laughs> at school when i'm streaming to a different classroom Just finding the occasional stitch there and then lastly the presentation mode so this is just going to do a job of yeah tracking me as the one presenter so it tracks up to two presenters i quite like this i quite like this as opposed to using the software, because the software didn't work all that well. I felt the, um, oh, they call it iStage software. And I'll maybe show that in a moment as well, just to sort of complete this whole uh, view. But the iStage software was with the Totem 180, and it just, it didn't have sort of high enough frame rate, whereas this is the frame rate is absolutely fine. So yeah, what do you think about this uh, view? Is this something that you would actually um, want to use in your own setting? Be really interested to know. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty impressed by this though. I, I'm going to say that this is, I think, along with the 120, which I haven't tried. <laughs> I know I'm going to like this uh, because it's got both in one although being able probably being able to use the two lenses simultaneously might be quite a nice feature with this this totem 120 has a front facing mode or it can flip down into a visualizer mode which i really like but perhaps there's a solution ip that can come with in the future where we could actually be using both simultaneously although i guess just having two of these or having this alongside another camera in a meeting room would be a nice way to do this so there we are there's our free products uh this is the 180 that you've been looking for most of the video you've been using uh, enjoying that view this is the vocal which is the ai microphone and then this is the this is the 120 which has both visualizer mode and webcam mode two different lenses on there to enable that and say you've got the two lenses there if they could have found a way to use it in this kind of way to be able to within the device give us a top down and you know like like my like this view if you could have used both of these lenses to actually give us <laughs> to actually give us both views side by side like this that might have been quite nice um maybe there's a way to do that um either with the software or maybe there's a way to do that with a firmware update they could give us one option to actually give us either or, or both at the same time although you obviously couldn't have the top down view and it'd be pointed at your face at the same time so this camera this 360 camera is the final product that i've unboxed today and it is one that i'm really impressed with except for the uh color that i seem to be getting from it i don't know whether to fit four cameras in they've maybe had to use a lower quality sensor i don't know this is all stuff that we can check out in the full review looking at the top there are four different microphones um <laughs> four different microphones on top there so it can handle all of the directions let's pop this on here now I'm going to ask if there are any questions, any comments or concerns, anything that you do want to ask me about. 
towards as I just wrap up this live stream do fire on what do you think about these are these going to fit into your workflows are these going to fit into your workplaces are you going to rush out and buy these straight away I have a couple of questions for you and you can feel free to fire on ask me about anything at all incidentally it does not have to be just about these I'm going to come back shortly after doing these after doing this I'm going to come back shortly after and do my first members only video um, first members only and I'm going to do it live uh, feel free if you're interested in that then you can hit that join button and you can join in with that live stream now um, that will be at 10 past or quarter past I think I've scheduled that out already so I'm going to go and get myself a non-alcoholic beer and if you feel like joining me for that then you're very very welcome of course the um, question I have for you is what percentage of your meetings at work are actually hybrid that would be an interesting one to answer so you know if you're If you're interested in these, it will, will probably be because your meetings are hybrid. Go ahead and fire that uh, into the comments section um, or the chat section now. And I have one more question that I wanted to ask you as well. Which is, do you currently use dedicated meeting room cameras? And if so, what's your experience been of which ones um, do you use? Do you currently use dedicated meeting room cameras? And if so, which and what's your experience been? So I'm just going to leave you with one more of these. Thanks so much for watching. If you're here towards the end of the live stream, then I hope it's fair to say that you find this content valuable. I have found a way to offer even more value to you. If you want to go deeper and also to support the channel even more going forwards, channel memberships are a great way to get involved in more of a community and more of a conversational form of content. The key benefits to becoming an Evaluate Everything member are members only live streams where I'll answer your questions and give you my insights into the devices that I'm evaluating even before I've published a full review. So if you do want a bit of a preview of the points that are going to make it into the full review before I've even been able to shoot or edit those videos, you can get involved with that. You can ask questions and request demos and really just discuss and influence the content as it goes forward. I really hope this community grows into a place where we can have a meaningful discussion around these devices that I evaluate. There'll also be community posts for members only discussions and membership also means that your questions and comments are highlighted to me in my memberships area. There's no change to what I'm offering here for free, but here's an open invite for you to go deeper and help me to evaluate everything. Back to the live stream. And we're back again now with the Totem 180 and we've got the microphone from the Totem 180 as well. I think I will just demonstrate, as I said, the software that uh, I had mentioned, which is iStage software. So let's go ahead and open up. And then you can pick from, once that has loaded up, I'll show that on the screen. Uh, you can pick which camera that's going to pick from, what actual physical camera source that's going to pick from. So I'm going to pick the 360. And then you can have different modes there. So I can do portrait mode. I don't think I can make this actually any bigger. Okay, and you can see though, it just, yeah, that's a bit better than it was with the um, one into there. You can then do split screen within this of course and have a second source as well so i can actually within this use the vzx which is my top down camera that you've been looking at so far although it's being because it's being accessed by something else it's not letting me do that that's understandable and then i'm not sure this auto switches the mode is auto switching it's interesting or i can have a conferencing mode Panoramic conferencing mode or just being a document camera, which you won't be able to do because it's not a document camera. There's the conferencing mode AI auto reframe. Let's just put that in as my second camera. So then I go, uh, when I click my extra camera now, I have the option of the iStage camera. Now I can solo that. And there we are, I've got all those options I've shown you. 
but there doesn't seem to be a 360 way. <laughs> doesn't seem to be a 360 way. It just picked up Gary the gorilla there. I can't compensate. My gorilla's way over in the background over there. <laughs> and you can see this is a bit more of a... Oh, don't know. <laughs> you, can, you can see this is a bit more of a sort of... Uh, also, like, it's doing a better job of tracking me than the, the actual AI framing was in the cameras, but it's also not as high quality. There's sometimes it's like glitchiness there as well. Panoramic conferencing gives you the full kind of panoramic view, although it's only giving me some of it. It's not giving me the full 360 out of the totem 360. Um, and it splits it down into individual speakers. So if I once again hold up something that's got something else in, I see it will detect them. Or it won't. <laughs> And it will split those down into people, but yeah, there we go. Finally. So it just takes a moment, which is totally understandable. Now, obviously, this uh, your mileage will vary. I'm not in a meeting room around the conference table. Maybe this works seamlessly with, I think it's up to eight people you can track with this thing, um, this software. Maybe it'll work absolutely seamlessly with that. Um, around a table, so that's something to try out for the full review. So, looking forward to for reviewing these. There will be a review of each one of these on my channel in the next few weeks. Let me know if you've got any questions. Let me know if you've got things burning to that you'd like answered about these. Then do fire in in the chat. I will look forward to answering those. And I will be back shortly. And if you want to join me for a chat, we're going to talk about e-ink tablets. We're going to talk about what is the currently the best e-ink tablets to buy and um, I may or may not stick with this uh, setup. I'm going to enjoy having a little look myself now at the actual quality of this and the quality of the microphones and see what I think whether I'm going to just for the sake of uh, simplicity carry on streaming with these and use these microphones or I'm going to switch to my ordinary, this is the USB mic that I usually use maybe along with the camera or one or the others. We'll see. So thanks very much for watching today.